Hi, in this lecture, we are going to see cues and hips. So a, a cue is a familiar data structure um, that you actually interact with every time you uh, join a line, okay? Uh, a line or a queue. So uh, the operations that it supports are NQ or joining the line and DQ, which is a getting out of the line. And uh, um, the queue uh, represents uh, um, a first in, first out order. Okay, so the first person that joins the queue is the first person who gets out. And there is a, a simple uh, um, constant time implementation using uh, an array. So we can use an array A for uh, um, having a, a maximum uh, um, number n of elements in the queue. So the array A will go from 0 to n minus 1. And we keep two pointers, uh, first and last, in the array. And to support the nq of an element x, we first check if uh, uh, last is less than n. Okay. Uh, if not, then we do nothing because it means that uh, we are trying to put uh, too many elements in the queue. If it is, uh, then we simply put x at the position last uh, in A and then we increment last. And in DQ, uh, we first check if there is something to uh, get out of the queue. So if first is less than uh, last, if not, you do nothing. It means the queue is empty. Otherwise, uh, you take the you return the element uh, first of A and then you increment uh, the pointer first. So uh, a priority queue um, is um, a more fancy queue in which you again you want to support, but you also want to be able to extract the minimum element in the queue. Okay, you want to uh, insert elements, uh, uh, insert keys, and you want to be able to extract the minimum key. Okay, we will see applications of this in graph algorithms. Um, of course, we can do this, uh, um, how? We can do this uh, using, for example, AA trees, okay? And this will cost time order log n per query and linear space. Um, so this is because uh, uh, you can find the minimum element in the binary search trees in logarithmic time. Okay, so this is one way of doing that. However, we are now going to see a data structure which is a simpler and somewhat more efficient. Okay, so the time is still going to be order of log n, but the space will be just n. Okay, we're going to be able to get rid of all the pointers of the trees. As we mentioned earlier, uh, even for general trees, is it possible to uh, remove the pointers, but it's a much more complicated uh, data structure. While the one that we're going to see uh, is extremely simple uh, uh, and very, very easy to program and understand. Um, we're going to go back to uh, trees for a little while. Um, so we're going to call a binary tree complete if all the nodes have two children except the nodes in the last level. Okay, here is a, a complete binary tree. Every node has two children except the nodes at the last level. Uh, a complete binary tree of depth d would have uh, 2 to the d leaves. Okay, so here you have depth 3 and you have 8 leaves and it has 2 to the d plus 1 minus 1 nodes. For example, uh, in this tree, the depth is 3, the number of leaves is 2 to the 3, which is 8, and the number of nodes is 2 to the 3 plus 1 minus 1, which is 15. What we're really interested in is something which is called a heap. A heap is like a complete binary tree, except that the last level may be missing some nodes, and what's missing uh, um, is right to, to left. In other words, the last level is filled from left to right. Okay? And a complete binary tree is a special case of a heap. Okay? 
the case in which the last level is also complete, but the heap, al the heap allows this flexibility of only having some elements in the last uh, level, and this is going to be important. A heap is very conveniently represented using arrays. Okay. Here is a, a heap, and here is how you can represent it with an array. So there are 12 elements in this heap, and there are 12 elements in this array. And the first element of the array with index 1 would be the root of the uh, heap. And then uh, it is uh, very uh, simple and cool how you can navigate uh, the heap, just using some basic arithmetic. So if you are given an index i to a node, <coughs> Then um, you can find the uh, left child of i simply by multiplying i by 2. Okay, so for example, you go from 1, you go to the left child, uh, that would be uh, 2 times 1, which is 2, and then again the left child would be 4, and so on. The right child of i would be 2 times i plus 1. So for example, the right child of 5 is 2 times 5, 10 plus 1, so it's, it's, it's 11. And the parent uh, would simply be the integer division by 2. So the parent of 7 would be uh, 3. Parent of 3 would be 1, and so on. And you can see um, these operations, uh, which arrows they correspond to in the array, in this picture here. So again, uh, for example, the, um, if you're a 4, the left child of 4 would be 8. The right child of 4 would be 9 and the parent of 4 would be 2. So heaps are useful to dynamically maintain a set of elements while allowing for extraction of minimum. This is a priority queue that we mentioned earlier. The same results um, hold for extraction of maximum instead of minimum, but we're going to focus on minimum for concreteness. So for this extraction, we are going to work with what's called a mean heap. Okay? So a mean heap is a heap which, in addition, satisfies this mean heap property, that the, that the value um, at the parent is always less or equal the value of the child for every i. Okay? So for example, um, in this figure here, um, on the top, uh, we have the index to the node in the array, and inside the node, you have some key values. Okay? And as you can see, this thing is a mean heap because this value 1 is less than 2 and 4, um, 3 is less than uh, 9, 2 is less than 8, 9 is less than 16, 9 is less than 10, 8 is less than 14, and so on. So. If you want to extract the minimum element, um, well, in a min heap A, the minimum element is at the root. Okay? And here is the operation uh, to extract it. So if you want to extract the minimum from, from a heap, first you, you, you take the root, you set this to be the minimum, that's the, the minimum. Okay? And then um, you have to put something here. Okay, and what you're going to put is actually um, the worst thing in some sense. You're going to put the last element uh, in, in the heap. You do this because remember that in a heap, the last level can only be filled from left to right. So you have to remove this element here. You put it here. And you reduce the uh, heap size by 1. Okay, so here is the minimum. We're going to take this, this 10 and put it here. Now this thing is not a heap anymore, and there's going to be another operation, which is called the mean heapify, which uh, um, restores the mean heap property. So it's going to reshuffle this thing and transform it into a heap. Let us see the steps of uh, uh, the mean heapify function, which restores the mean heap property. The mean heapify um, 
works as follows. It's, it's given an array A and an index I such that the trees rooted at the left child of I and at the right child of I are both mean heaps, but uh, the value at position I may be greater than, than its children. So for example, in this picture here, uh, the right child is a mean heap, the left child is a mean heap, but its value 10 is too big, okay? So the way it works is simply going to uh, move this value 10 and swap it uh, with, the, with the children. So uh, mean if i of a of i, first it's gonna pick the smallest uh, uh, value among i and its, ch and its uh, children, okay? So the smallest value among a of i a of left of i and a of right of i, okay? And as long as, uh, so if, if this value is the one at i, then we are done. We have the mini property. If it's not at i, then you're going to exchange it with the value at i, and you're going to continue minipify where you put that value. So for example, here, the minimum value uh, j will be, um, the minimum value would be two, um, so the index j would be three. So we're gonna swap this 10 and this two, so two goes up and 10 goes down. Then again, um, you repeat, and uh, um, 10 is bigger than three, so we're gonna swap these two. And now this thing is a min heap and we are done. The running time for this, is the depth of the min heap, which is logarithmic in the size of the heap. Okay, recall that uh, when you wanted to extract a min heap, you do these things, you fetch it from the root, uh, you move the last element to the root, you decrease the size of the heap, and then you call the min, min uh, heapify. So the running time of this is dominated by the running time for min heapify, with just so that this thing runs in time order of log n, so the entire operation to extract the min, uh, minimum element from heap is order of log n. Okay, we also want to insert into a heap. So how do we insert into a heap? So uh, to insert into a minip, uh, we follow a similar philosophy to uh, the minipify function, okay? So if you want to insert a key, so first uh, you increase the size of the heap by one, and then you place the key at the last element, and then you move uh, up from the node to the root, and every time you perform the necessary exchanges. So you have a, a for loop, uh, uh, i goes uh, uh, from the last element. Uh, you're gonna continue as long as uh, you're not at the root and the value of the parent is bigger than, than, than the value of the child, which is not correct. And every time you move i uh, up, and you, you exchange the value of the parent with the value of the child. Okay, so the running time for this uh, is order of clock n. If we want to see a demonstration of how inserting uh, works, so we can go back to our previous pictures. Uh, think of this as a heap in which I just inserted 10. Then 10 uh, is going to go up uh, and then up again. In general, uh, you may of course stop before the root. Okay, so we have seen how to uh, insert an element in the logarithmic time. So now suppose that you start with an empty heap and you want to insert n elements. You want to build a heap from scratch. Uh, now by above the running time uh, is order of n log n. Okay, every element will take you to most log n. There's only an element, so it's order of n log n. But in fact, uh, um, we're gonna see now that uh, um, the time for doing that is just order of n, okay? 
So um, the cool thing is that if I give you a bunch of elements, I give you an element and you want to build a heap with these elements, a mean heap with these elements, then you can do this at no cost, okay? So you can just do this in linear time, essentially just the time to read the elements. Okay, and the way in which you can do it is this. Here is the uh, operation to build a mean heap. Uh, so as input, you just have uh, an array A which uh, has elements, okay, uh, in no particular order. And as output, you want a mean heap of A. Okay, and the way it uh, works is that uh, um, you simply keep calling min uh, heapify. So you start from the uh, middle of the um, array, okay, and uh, you go backwards until the beginning, and then every time you call the min uh, heapify. So what's happening here is this. So if you have uh, um, elements like this with some, with some values at the, at the nodes. Um, so if you think, at the, if you look at the leaves, um, the leaves are mean heaps, okay? So the subtree here, which is just a single node, uh, is clearly a mean heap because you don't have any children. This thing also is a mean heap. This thing also is a mean heap. The first one that may not be a min heap is this node here, because this value may not be smaller than uh, um, the, the child. So the index of the first element which may violate the min heap property is length of a divided by two. So we um, call the min heapify function here, which is gonna transform this thing into a heap. Then we move to its um, Next uh, uh, node, again, we call the minipify here, at the end of which this thing is gonna be a minip. And then we continue, the next one we're gonna be the root in this case, we call the minipify here. Okay, so we start from the bottom and we make the subtrees um, min heaps. So what's the running time? Uh, so to get order of n running time, we have to make analysis uh, um, uh, appropriate. So the mini epify takes time order of h, where h is the depth of the tree. Okay, and what we need to ask ourselves is how many trees of a given depth h we have in this operation. Okay, and the number of trees of depth h will be n over through the h, n is the number of elements in the, the array, okay? So for example, um, here, right, we had um, just three elements of depth uh, zero, then two of depth one, and then one of depth two. Okay, so the number of elements at depth h is at most order of n over through the h. And for each of them, we're gonna spend the h for the mean uh, heapify. So we have to compute this sum. Okay. This n here can be brought outside, and this h here uh, goes here. And this sum here uh, is a, a geometric sum. And has constant value. This is just order of n, okay? This h here um, has essentially no effect uh, when it's divided by an exponential function in h. This thing is gonna behave essentially like a sum over one over through the h, um, which is a generic sum and has a um, <clears throat> constant sum. Okay, and this concludes our exposition of uh, HIPS.